everyone welcome back once again please like and share the video to post and please subscribe to my channel for interesting chess content uh, so the game i'm going to show you today uh, is very special for me because i scored a win against a grandmaster over the board for the first time although i have done it many times online uh, you'll enjoy the game i promise you here uh, gm mikhail brakin had the white pieces against me and he opened with c4 the english opening e6 knight c3 d5 it's theory d4 c6 the triangle system if e3 and f5 uh, that's the plan uh, usually uh, want to bring your knight closer and take control of the e4 square it's very important in these variations he played bishop d3 not surprising knight f6 knight g e2 and bishop d6 simply developing my bishop to the best square possible f3 castle queen c2 and a6 i spent a lot of time calculating this move and um i am preparing a b5 and to stop that uh Black, a white has to play a4 and after that I was thinking during the game to play a5 and now my plan would be to gain some counter play on the queen side by knight a6, knight b4 and now I will get the bishop here. And instead he played bishop d2 and I presume that plan would be maybe to to keep another option as long castle um, so i played b5 striking b3 was played if he played c5 i would have played bishop c7 and now my plan would be g6 supporting my f5 pawn and then play e5 strike at the center but instead he played b3 and okay i played knight bd7 um and now if c takes d5, c takes d5, knight takes b5 uh, do not work because of a takes b5, queen c6 and I have knight b6 at least in every variation. So there are no tactics like that and it's c5, it's okay. I played bishop c7, I was thinking about bishop b8 during the game but my a rook would be useless in. Uh, if the a file is closed <laughs> so c5 bishop c7 knight d1 and this was his first critical mistake in the game and i took advantage of it immediately you can try and think uh, what move i played it was the absolute best move and the move is knight to e4 sacrificing a whole knight temporarily but um, this is a great move and my opponent took f takes e4 and f takes e4 now the point is that this bishop is trapped and a plan would be to take this bishop and start march marching my e pawn forward and I would get a central advantage and very active pieces which would be attacking the opponent's king side so he played bishop takes e4 and now I spent a lot of time calculating d takes e4 which was no good after queen takes e4 as both of my pawns are hanging and he also has this plan of knight f2 and castles and he would be safe. So I played queen h4 check and now he's forced to play g3 there's nothing better he can do. Queen takes e4, forcing the tree of queens as you can see the rook is also hanging. Takes, takes, knight f2. Attacking my e4 pawn, I played knight f6. I have spent here a lot of time calculating e5, but I have knight takes e4, e takes d4, knight takes d4, rook e8. Knight d6, bishop takes d6, c takes d6. I saw a variation like this. I can play bishop b7 and c5, but. I was not sure whether uh, the spawn advantage is just enough because there are some ideas like 
the knight goes to c6 and then to e7 and all that stuff even bishop a5 at some point after defending this e3 pawn so yeah knight f6 going to keep it simple and i calculated knight c3 here which he did not win the game by the way but let me show you uh, it's a fun line e5 I sacrifice the pawn and then e takes d4 just if he takes then there's rook e8 so there's nothing to wor worry about and these bishops are monsters come um, and so he played castles and i played e5 opening my light squared bishop d takes e5 bishop takes e5 and bishop c3 offering a trade of bishops and um i'll i'll just hiding between two moves here first of all bishop takes c3 and rook e8 which i played in the game hey bishop takes c3 knight takes c3 rook e8 either rook a d1 and yeah he's got the control of the d5 so and i also saw bishop f5 and b4 and yes uh, i thought that it's not a significant advantage i played rook e8 played rook f e1 which was a very strange move to me as it does not have a particular purpose i can think of uh, just to defend the e3 pawn played b4 and in this position i offered him a draw which he declined immediately and I, I, the reason i offered him a draw was because of my change of pawn structure and i was not so sure about it yes and um, he uh, declined the draw and played bishop takes e5 immediately i played it. rook takes e5 and our rook a c1 defending the c5 pawn and i played knight d5 very natural attacking the e3 pawn and here i just calculated knight f4 and knight c3 then yes uh i thought i was good here yeah. but instead he played rook c4 and at first i got worried uh, but then i saw a pool line in which uh, I have the advantage. So, I played bishop f5, defending the pawn. He played knight d4. Here, maybe knight f4 was better. And he's threatening to capture my knight and capture the b4 pawn. And after a5, something like that, uh, g4, and my e4 pawn is lost. So, knight d4. And yes, bishop d7. I played uh, defending my c6 pawn. And now knight c2. He thought that he had tricked me tra tactically, and but he had not. I played a5, defending the b4 pawn. And you see the idea why I left the e4 pawn hanging. This is because um, if rook takes e4, rook takes e4, knight takes e4, and bishop f5. And I'm gonna win one of the knights. If knight takes e4, I calculated rook a8 during the game, and after knight d6, something like this, like this, and yes, I have the bishop in the end game. And the c5 pawn is a bit of a weakness. That's what I calculated during the game. And also to mention, uh, I also calculated bishop f5. If knight d6, then bishop d3, I simply uh, win one of them. Uh, and uh, um, if knight f2, uh, taking control of the d3 square, bishop c2, rook c2, knight d3, and some variation like this, where um, I did not prefer uh, black so much because uh, my a5 pawn is very weak. So, uh, after knight c2 a5, we play g4, which is 
a very yes it now nah, idea is clear he wants to prevent my bishop f5 but he has pushed his pawn on, on the king side which is um, not so good mm -hmm. rook a8 defending my e4 pawn and now my position is uh, completely safe and all everything is protected and now i am in the driver's seat here h3 another mistake yeah, that's just a waste of a move probably because of h5. I just simply uh, threatened to ruin his pawn structure. And yes, if g takes h5, I at least at least have knight f6. And now, like check can take on h5. The h3 pawn is weak, and my pawn is more towards the center. Mm -hmm. So king h2, hg4, and now hg4, rook f8. And my idea is that if he takes on e4 by his knight, his rook takes e4, rook takes e4, rook f2, check king g3, rook takes e2. I saw that a different game. So king g2, knight f6 attacking the g4 pawn and this pawn can't be saved good knight d4 thinking that uh, you have you will take my c6 pawn in some of the variations of a bishop takes g4 i'll play knight takes g4 and the point is if knight takes g4 this rook g5 a brutal move with a plan uh, rook takes d4 check rook f6 and rook f6 is a checkmate and there's no good way I, can, I could think of to prevent it without uh, giving a huge amount of material. So instead he played knight h3, he saw that of course. And now rook h5. My idea is to take on h3 and then I'll uh, in knight takes e3 discover check and grab the exchange back and I'll get a pawn and I'll ruin his pawn structure. So rook c c1 was played, of course he saw this, and I played knight e5. Another threat is very brutal, knight e3. Rook h1 was played, I played knight d 3 And if a move, a move like rook c2 is played, it's simply bishop take, rook takes h3, uh, rook takes h3, knight e1 check, and he loses the rook, and it's just simply collapsing for white. I think the best would have been to play something like rook b1. Now that bishop takes h3 check, rook takes h3 is just rook f2, king g3, rook g5, king h4, and a terrific mating idea rook fg2, threatening rook fg4 mate, rook, g, uh, rook 2 g4 mate, and rook h1. This is rook g6, threatening rook at 6 mate, and uh, I'm showing you one of the variations king h3, knight f2 check, king h4, rook at 6 mate. That's what I calculated. And uh, yeah, if king g3 here, there's knight f2, and yes, thing like this, and g6 bit is just unstoppable. Instead, he played rook c g1 in the game, and I played bishop takes a3 check. If he played rook takes h3, then there is rook f2 check, king g3, rook g5 check, king h4, and I win a rook. Easy winning. So king g3 was played. I played rook f6, and it was in this position that GM Michal Bracken resigned the game as uh, if he plays rook takes a3, there is just simply rook g6 check, king h shows forge because the knight is covering all those squares, rook h3, king h3, rook g1. And I'm simply a rook up, and it's inevitable. And if he does not play something like that, then rook g6 check uh, is just completely uh, destroying white. Uh, as after king h2, my bishop would move and deliver checkmate. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this game. See you soon and goodbye. Thank you.